All right. Welcome to Not Church. My name is Jacob Boker, and I'm here live with Austin Bush. Mr. Austin Bush. So what we're going to be talking about today is why people do not go to church, which I think is a pretty big subject. I know there's church hurt. Yeah. What other reasons do you think there is? Uh, I guess bad ideas of God. Or even God hurt. I've heard people say that they've been hurt by God, which I think is probably more people. Yeah, yeah. Um, people of God, people yeah. of faith. I know sometimes I see people like they see a hurting person. I feel like God told me a couple of years ago, and I'm not the best with my words, and I'll admit, you know I'll say that all the time. Like I mess up my words a lot, yeah. and I've used the wrong words most of my life. I, I can relate. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like um, that a lot of times, you know. We say the wrong thing for sure, and we're not the only ones who say that, but I had God challenge me a couple of years ago, and he said, don't speak with your words, speak with your actions. Mm. So that that really challenged me. It's like, don't speak with my words, speak with my actions. Let my actions speak louder than my words, which I think is a great thing because if we're letting our actions become our words, then we have to actually do what we're saying, right? We can't just say these things and that's where my point is, is I think too often, especially as Christians, right, something bad will happen to somebody and we throw a Bible verse at them. Right, right. And and I've seen that all too often. Like sometimes um, a scripture is not what they need uh, at that time. And it, it actually compounds the hurt that's going on. It actually compounds the situation. And so they just equate that to be what what church or what christians do you see what i mean and yeah. so like when when they've experienced some bad thing like that it kind of turns them off to god it turns them off to church well when you're broken or you're hurt and let's just say somebody died and you're like well this verse and that verse is you know just take this or god says he works all things together for the good of the people that love him it's like dude, my family member just died, my mom or dad just died, my child just died, and you want to tell me all things work together for the good of God, people that love God? Where's the good in this? Like, I can't see that. I think too often we throw Bible verses at people, or we don't even understand the Bible verses ourselves. It's just something that comes out. Or we don't have the right context. Or let's just think about it. Maybe we know the Bible verse and really what it means, but what about the people that maybe were thrown that Bible verse at? What if it's the first time they've ever heard that? And they don't even understand it, and they don't have any context or pretext for it. So now you just threw that Bible verse at them, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, great. Like, I don't even know what that meant, but if this is what you're going to do when I'm hurt, I don't want anything to do with you or God. Yeah. And uh, when you were saying that earlier, too, like uh, you said, the action and love is just that. Yes. You know, it's actually... It's actually something that's put into action. You know, it's not just the the word love. Mm. It's the actual act, you know, like and it's and honestly it's something that I don't think that I fully fully understand. And I've been a Christian for a while now and like and there's some like you've seen a, a diamond. Yeah. There's so many facets to that diamond. And when I when I look at love even even now, after everything that I've been through, uh, um, I see love in, in different ways, <laughs> you know, and, and different actions. Yeah, I feel like one of the first things God told me was I had to learn how to love. And I'm like, it was in my hardest, my hardest time. I don't even think I understand really what love is because love, and I didn't, it was more of a lust, which was, I understood lust for sure. But lust, lust is one of the seven deadly sins. Um. But love is a completely different thing. But when you tell somebody when they're hurt or broken, like just throw a Bible verse at them and think it's going to be all right, I think that's where we fall short a lot of times as Christians. And that's why I wanted to create this program that's called Not Church, and we're not pastors. Because me and or Austin are not pastors. Um, we're both men of God, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we're men of faith. Yeah. But I think we still have a lot to learn. If you think I'm going to go up there and... You know, I struggle a lot, it, like, memorizing the Bible verses. 
And there's people I talk to that know these Bible verses and could just spit them off. But sometimes I'm like, well, does that mean I'm not as good of a Christian because I don't know as many Bible verses? And that I don't think that means I'm not a, as good as a Christian. I think it just means I'm not as good as memorizing as maybe they are. Yeah. Uh, memorizing scriptures does not make you better uh, or worse, per se. Uh, just means you're more knowledgeable and retaining information yeah Yeah. Yeah, but uh as far as uh and like we've been talking about like a lot of christians because they came to the faith and because they know the bible verse they think of it as like a a a level or a badge of honor to have all these memory scriptures where you can see a circumstance and spit it out Mm. when in effect the mature believer or the mature person that's walking in relationship with with Christ will actually do the the action, will actually be there. Will live it out. Yeah. That's the thing is, like, with Jesus, you don't even see Jesus really quoting Scripture. He did say, well, Scripture said, or he has said stuff like that, but most of the things that he did, he actually lived it out. He actually lived it out all the way from going on the cross for us. Mm-hmm. Um, he lived it out. When he was healing people, he lived it out. And he didn't necessarily say, you know, this Bible verse of this and that, and then he went and did it. He went and did it, and then if people asked him about it later, he would give some descriptions and maybe use the Bible verses for context or maybe pretext of what he did, but he didn't just go throw Bible verses at people. He actually did actions, and a lot of times you hear Christians say, hey, we want to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, if we want to be like Jesus... Sometimes we have to stop throwing Bible verses at people because sometimes it hurts. I was talking to a gentleman earlier today. He's telling me, I'm just so sick of it, Jacob. Like, I tell the church and they don't do anything. Or they tell me to do something. And it's like, I I won't go to, you know, rehab or AA. I've already been through those programs. And that's not what I need. He said, sometimes I just need a hug. Sometimes I just need to be loved. Sometimes I just need a friend. He said, I'm, I'm lonely. I'm struggling with loneliness. I'm struggling with depression. I'm struggling with rejection. And a lot of times that leads me to alcoholism or drinking. And he was just telling me that, like, sometimes I don't need people to tell me what I need to do. And it's like, that's almost the same thing as throwing a Bible verse at him. Sometimes we just have to love people. Sometimes we just have to give them a hug. Sometimes we have to just go do something with them or talk with them or lend them an ear for a half hour even an hour or whatever, even if they're not telling us the things that we want to hear, maybe they're even telling us things that are making us angry and making us mad. And maybe we do want to start telling them things too, but is that really going to help us or help them heal? I think that's really what God's calling us to do. You said something earlier about, you know, you want to reach the people in the darkness and bring them to the light. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I was in, in Acts 26 chapter, uh, uh, Paul, uh, has an encounter with uh, Jesus after Jesus has already ascended, right? Yeah. So Jesus comes in light and knocks Paul off his horse, man. And and um, Paul, you know, he's he's like, "What is it, Lord?" You know, and and uh, Jesus says, "Get on your feet," and mm. he says, "He says I'm taking you," uh, and. and taking you apart from the Jews and the Gentiles, but you're going to go to them and preach. Yeah. He said, he said you're going to go to them and bring them from the darkness to the light. He said, from the power of Satan to the power of God, you mm. know, and he, he gives them this, this mandate, man. And uh, when I read that, you know, I hit the floor and, um, and then I read the part, get up. So I stood on my feet and I was like, I received this from you, Lord, you know, but, that's the heart, you know, bringing people from where they're at. But he, he told them to go where they're at. Yeah. He, he set them apart just specifically for that. And and it's outside the four walls. It's, mm. it's not. Uh, that stuff can happen in the four walls. Don't get me wrong. Like people can come into the church broken and receive healing and receive uh, revelation and receive those things and, and ministers you know, minister to them. But the church was also called to do the same thing. Yeah. To go outside the four walls, to meet people where they're at, 
I think a good example would be almost, you know, as far as Christians hurting other people, and that's a lot of what we will talk about during these series, just because uh, the people that we're trying to reach aren't the people necessarily going to church or the ones that are maybe hurt by the church or maybe not going to church and thinking about it. But there's this, this, I guess, reputation almost for Christians of just almost saying the Bible verses or saying the wrong things, like I've said my whole life, and they think that we're representative of God, which we are, in a sense, if we're going to church and we're being Christians and we're trying to tell people about him. But then you tell me that somebody just died or you're struggling with loneliness or you're struggling with these other things. And we're just like, boom, here's a Bible verse for it. It's like reminds me of the Good Samaritan, right? So there's a priest that walked by and then the Levite, which were priests too, right? So there's two of them, which... They probably prayed for him or something, right? Like, oh, walk by and it's like, Lord, please help him. And some some of those guys wouldn't even talk to him because they didn't want to be considered unclean. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. which is more important. Like, I don't want to be unclean, so I'm not going to talk to him. This person's homeless or this person's a druggie or this person's an alcoholic, so you know what? I'm not going to talk to them. This person just got a divorce, so I don't want to talk to them. But then there's the good Samaritan who not only picked him up and helped him and cleaned up his you know, wounds and all that, but took him to an end and said, here's some money, but if I owe you more by the time I come back, just take care of him and I'll take care of it and I'll take care of you. And it's like, I feel like that's what we need to do more as Christians is meet people where they're at, mm -hmm. not where we want them to be, not where we expect them to be, not where we're at, right? Yes. But where they're at, where they're at, because eventually if we can meet them where they're at, we could get them to where... God wants them to be, not where I want them to be, but where God wants them to be. And that's the most important thing is where God wants you to be. And I know for some of you guys listening right now, maybe you're struggling even believing in God. Like, is God even real? If God was real, why would he allow this? If God was real, why would he allow that? Why would he allow a child to be abused? If he was real, why would he allow your child to die of cancer, Right. Or your mom or dad to die when you prayed, and you prayed hard, right? And I've been a Christian and a believer, and I prayed for stuff, and it didn't work out to my expectation. And I've had people tell me those verses, hey, you know, God works all things together for the good of the people that love him and all this. And you're like, dude, but I'm hurt. I'm broken. The church just hurt me. I'm broken. Yeah. And it's like, those are all good, but how are we supposed to help people heal? How are we supposed to really show people who Jesus is? Yeah. I think, uh, and this is, like, this is me personally, like, um, spending time with God, mm -hmm. uh, hanging out with God, um, you know, like, being with Him, you want to be more like Him, you, you want to, you want to carry that, and, um, it's like that character, like, we, we say, like, in the name of Jesus, right? Yeah. Uh really is in the character mm. and you can only have his character if you hang out with him that's not good. somebody who claims to be like him not somebody who knows the statistics of him yeah. but really spending time with him and, and seeking him and and i, I say that uh, because a lot of people have been hurt by people that claim to be Christians, claim to be men of God, claim to, to uh, even some churches, you know, uh, and uh, some churches, they have a, a good idea, you know, but they're, they're just not doing the right thing, you know, and, and um, there's a lot of ministers out there that are, are not doing the right thing, and, and and I'm not I'm not bashing anybody right here, but I'm saying that it's hurt a lot of people out there. Well, I feel like a lot of the church nowadays is, and I'm once again disclaimer, we're not talking bad no. about any church or any Christian, and we're all trying our best. So we're not sitting here on our high horse saying, "Well, we have figured it out, so now we're going to do a podcast about it." By no means, but what we are saying is, can we do better? Because I feel like I've gone to some of these. Other churches, not the current church I'm at now, but I've gone to some of these other churches, and I felt like it was a concert. I, I'm a, I'm a big entertainment guy. We're doing podcasts right now. I've been yeah, doing love, media my whole life. I love entertainment. <laughs> I love entertainment. I've gone to concerts. I've gone to shows. I've gone to stuff. Yeah. But the production, the people that they take pictures of, the people that they show, the people that are on stage, the songs that come in, the whole like production aspect, 
almost feels more like of a show. And it's like, well, are we leaving room for God to come in? And one thing I want to challenge you guys with, if you are struggling with God and you are saying, well, is God real? If he's real, why would this happen? Or why would he allow that? Or why would I be struggling with the things I'm struggling with? Or why every time I go to church, I feel like this? And you you have the right to feel however you feel. That's the way you feel. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And we want to just say that's okay. I can share this from my personal experience, though. For years and years, I didn't read the Bible. Let's just put it this way. It took me 40 years to read the Bible. So 40 years to read the Bible. But I used to think the Bible was a like a dictionary for Christians. Like, we carry it around, and we're going to thump you with it, and we know this word, and you don't know it. And I thought it was just filled with all these Sunday suit people and these, you know, these quotes that they use, which it is. But then I started to realize the people, once I started to read it, like the people that were in the Bible, let's start with Adam and Eve, right? God told them don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? First thing, well, not the first thing, but one of the things they did do was eat from it. Then God came, and what did they do? Did they go and say, hey, God, like we ate from it, we're sorry, like we repent, our bad. No, the first thing they did was hide, yeah. and they hid from God. And then you have Cain and Abel. Yeah, that's, that's so... Uh, yeah, Go for it. No, um, Jump in. So, like, they used to have fellowship. They used to hang Talk out with God. God. Yes. God would come at a certain time every day, and, um, and he would meet with them. It was like clockwork. Like, they knew. Yeah. And so th- they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to build any altar. They didn't have to do a certain thing for him to come. They they just they just had that relationship without any strings attached. Just yes. full communion in the garden and and he would come in the cool of the night and in the cool in the breeze and stuff. And I saw that, but when they did eat they, they hid. They hid. First thing they did they was hide. Hid, they hid, they ran from him. Mm. They didn't want they they knew, you know, and and they ran from him and that's the sin that entered. And I, I was saying that because a lot of people struggle is God good? Yeah. God didn't God wants full communion. God wants, wants that a relationship. relationship and and uh because that sin entered the world and and we're born like it, it's it's an actual thing that was passed on from that moment on like when they recreated and they procreated we carry that that same sin nature. Yes. And and it's it's natural, and we have that 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 in us, you know. But it's so, it's so easy to lose the sight of of the good God that made us, you know. And they say, "Is God good?" Well, if He's good, then this and this and that, right? Yeah. Uh, if God was not good, He wouldn't have sent His Son. So that we could have the same relationship that Adam had before. So mm, amen. That's good. You know, so um, I want to I want to challenge people uh, to get outside of the way that they they thought about. If you think that God is not good, uh, He didn't want us to have this in nature. He didn't want us to 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 do that. And we live in a fallen world. So this is one yeah. thing I want to do real quick. I've done it somewhat before but during the middle of the series right now i want to challenge you guys because austin challenged you guys so now i'm going to throw out a challenge too (laughs) (laughs) so it's called um you know a lot of times i feel like as christians we don't think that we're we think that we're unworthy right Mm -hmm. or we try to hide or we try to run and this section is going to be called maybe you are qualified maybe you're qualified for god to use you maybe you are the perfect person that god is using you so what we're going to do is I'm going to share a couple stories and Austin's going to share a couple stories of people in the Bible that God has used. And we're going to try to go in some type of order, but we may just skip around a little bit. So let's just talk about Cain and Abel. In the very beginning, that was actually the first murder recorded after eating of the tree. That was the first murder recorded. It wasn't just a conflict between brothers and one killed another one. That was the first murder actually recorded. And then, so let's go on. All right, so we have, let's say, I'm going to start with Noah. So you may be qualified or get God may want the relationship with you, even if you spend hundreds of years building a boat, 
to survive a flood, to go get drunk right afterwards. So if anybody here has been drunk or is drinking currently, or you're listening to this drinking or you're drunk, I challenge you, maybe God wants to use you because the first thing Noah did was get drunk and de- get defiled by his son. So maybe if you've been drunk or been defiled by your son, maybe you are qualified for God to use you. Because that's the thing a lot of times we think is that we're unqualified, we're unworthy, right? We're not good enough. But maybe you are qualified enough. So what's one that you could think of that maybe people think, uh, you know, what some somebody that God has used or a thing that they've done that may help somebody listening realize, hmm, maybe the Bible's a little bit different than I thought, but then not only that, maybe I'm more qualified than I actually thought I was. Hmm. So what's something that comes to mind? Let's just talk about leaving your phone on when you're doing a podcast. <laughs> that would be me. God can still use me. God can still use me. <laughs> um Wow, that's uh, Rahab. Ooh, um, all right. You, you know, and and for so many reasons, like uh, she she was a prostitute. But yeah. who is related to Rahab that we may know of, or that maybe we've heard of before? Jesus Christ. Woo! So he, Jesus' is bloodline comes from the lineage of a prostitute. Of a prostitute, and and I I, I mean, it, it's so. Like to see the unclean thing that was going on, and God's mind, and God's plan still loved her. I mean, she, He still loved her, you know. Like, and there's still a had lot a purpose of, for her. And, and I shared a little bit of my testimony with you, you know. But I, w- I was out on the streets, man. And and you deal with that that world, you're gonna run into prostitution. You're gonna run into prostitutes, um, especially with drugs and all that stuff. And and a lot of them, I'm telling you, they deal with a lot of issues, mm. a lot of brokenness, and uh, a desperation to, to try to make a living. You yeah. Know? And so, like, they go to the extremes, even when it battles their morality, they go to the extremes to, to make ends meet. And I was thinking about, like, Rahab, like, that, that place and the city that she was in. Mm. You know that the walls of the city and that the, where the inn that she was at. Yeah, that's the only inn where the the building is still. There's still one one brick left. The, everything else, when it when the walls came falling down, that that particular part of the the wall was still left and in, intact. And I, I was thinking about all this stuff, man. I was like, not only that kind of stuff, God had a special place in His heart for her. Mm. for that seed to come all the way through. I was just like, man. Wow. So, moving on. So, if you're a prostitute, God still loves you and still has a plan and a purpose for you. Wow. So, you may be qualified. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go with Moses. I think too often we talk about, um, you know, we just think of Moses parting the Red Sea and freeing the people, but... 40 years before he actually killed, he killed somebody. Yeah, he killed a guy. He killed a guy. That's what sent him on the run. Yeah, and then he had to go live in the wilderness and do all these other things, and then he came back, and God was speaking to him from a burning bush and telling him, go do this. So if you killed somebody, God still has a plan and purpose for you. Not only that, he tried to argue with God and say that he wasn't good enough to be used. He wasn't... God, you have this messed up. I can't even talk good. I talk with the stutter, whatever it was. And God's like, all right, I'll have grace on you. Now you can have your brother Aaron speak for you. You could have him speak on your behalf, on our behalf, but you're still going to be used. And it's like, so you could be, have a stutter. If you have a stutter out there, you have a, maybe some imperfection or thing that you struggle with in life. If you killed somebody, God still wants to use you. What do you think about, what do you think about Moses? And, um, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you the truth. Go ahead and shame the devil right mm-hmm. there. Uh, I was watching that that thing on Netflix, that Moses uh, Old Testament like yeah. documentary, and they said something. And uh, it was along the lines of when he was he was talking to God. Yeah. And it made me think of you. Like, you came up because some of the stuff that you were sharing me when you started to write the book and when God yeah. was really dealing with you with some issues that are tough, right? 
He gave you some, cha- he challenged you. And you're like, why, why me? Yeah. You know, like, why, wh- I can't do this. Like he, Moses gave an excuse. Like, like God didn't already know. Yeah. <laughs> like, like God, but how, how many times have we shown God and like told God our weakness and he's already called us to be in. And so like, I think right on the target, man, I think that that's beautiful. Like he, he was, how many times have we ran? Mm. How many times have we ran? I mean, he, he killed some guys. So if you're, if you kill somebody, God can still use you. If you run, God, God can, can still, still use, use you. you. If you think that you don't have what it takes, God, God can, can still, still use you, you man. Mm, that's and, good. And, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't the most qualified. Yeah, just a little back, I guess, background on what Austin was talking about is a couple, uh, about three years ago, I went through a divorce. I have a son in a mental health hospital. I just finished reading the Bible, and I heard God talk to me. First thing he said is I had to learn how to love. The second thing is go start a podcast. And then I was doing all right, doing pretty good. And I asked him later on, he's like, go write a book. And I'm like, God, you got the wrong person. <laughs> like, I've been told my whole life and through the schools and everything, I'm dyslexic. I have learning disabilities, ADHD. Like, I'm like, God, you have the wrong person. Like, you made a mistake. Like, I know you're God, but you made a mistake on this one. And you didn't sit there and argue. And that leads me to this next one, too, is like, I was sitting there one day and I was like, God, I don't even know the purpose of you having me write this book. Like, I'm struggling writing it. I'm trying to hear what you're telling me to write. I just barely read the Bible. And just because you read the Bible doesn't know I doesn't mean I like memorize it verse by verse. Like to get through the whole Bible from Genesis to tribulations, like that's hard. There's a lot to go through. And like I had to push just I had to push through a lot of it and like just to make it to the end. Half of it, like comprehension was one of my learning disabilities. I'm not going to lie. Comprehension was one of my learning disabilities. I'm like, God, like, I got this one messed up. And, you know, one day I'm sitting there and I'm like, God, like, I don't even know the purpose of what you're having me do. This does not make sense. And he's like, he went and told me. And just keep in mind, like, I had read the Bible, but I didn't memorize it. I don't know who wrote each book of the Bible. Like, I did not know that. I just read the Bible. That's all I did was read the Bible. I'm a basic person. I've messed up my whole, most of my life, and I read the Bible. So now God's sitting there and telling me, well, how do you think Paul felt? I'm like, I don't know. why. How did Paul, Paul feel? You tell me, God. And the thing is, I didn't know that the book of Romans, which my first book, Renewal of the Mind, was actually based off of, I didn't know that Paul had wrote it. So then I went and looked, and I was like, oh, Paul wrote it. Mm-hmm. And then the crazy thing is, most of the writings and stuff that Paul did were actually from prison. So yeah. if you're in prison, or you've been in jail, or you're in jail currently listening, like God still has a plan. God still has a purpose for you and in your life, because it's not just supposed to be chaotic not just supposed to be messy like is there purpose in what he's done or what you've done another one i think of and i'll let you talk on this a little bit but let's talk about abraham yeah man oh man if there's this one guy i want to meet like uh like he's he's like one of the one of the top ones in the bible i want to i want to see like even (laughs) but uh so Abraham, Abraham, God said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations at 80 years old. So if you're old, if you're 80 <laughs> plus years old, God still has a purpose for you. But God says, I want you to be the father of many nations. And then his wife, Sarah, laughs at him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then what does he do after that? Well, actually, Jesus heard her. And Jesus heard her when she laughed. He he heard her and said, "Why is your wife laughing?" Yeah, <laughs> and she she denied it too. Yeah, <laughs> but, but so but the one of the things he does right afterwards is pretty much not trust God and saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. I want you to have a, you know a son with your wife," and he goes and sleeps with the servant. Yeah, they tried to. So they were yeah. So they received the promise uh, that they were going to have. He was going to be a father of many nations. It's unbelievable for two old, old people. They're, yeah. not, they're not young whippersnappers anymore. Yeah. You know, whippersnappers. And so, so uh, well, it wasn't happening. You know, the first time they got the they got the promise, and it wasn't happening the way 
Sarah wanted it to, or as fast as it, she thought it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And um, so she she told him to go sleep with the, the maidservant. And yeah, so if you're not patient, yeah. God could still use you. Yeah. If you don't want to trust God of what he's telling you, God could still use you. Yeah. And the thing is, like, he slept with the maidservant, and didn't he have a child? Yeah, Ishmael. Yeah. yeah. And um, that was... That was the one that they tried to force. <laughs> they tried to force it. <laughs> and then right afterwards, they have Isaac. Yeah. God came and, and told them this time next year. And sure enough, Isaac was born. Yep. And then God tells them, you know what? You're going to have to kill Isaac. Yeah. You're going to have to sacrifice Isaac. Yeah. Man, that's a tough one. So God gives you something that says you're going to be the father of many nations. He finally gives it to you. Now he's telling you to go sacrifice your own son. But if you read through the Bible, they say it's the, uh, you know, God's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob. So let's talk about Jacob a little bit. My name being Jacob, this one I always struggle with a little bit. I was like, God, you know, it's like, <laughs> hill grabber, really? Manipulator? Hmm. Yeah, so Jacob one day waited for his brother to come in who was a hunter and stuff like that. First of all, I think it's a little unfair just coming from the name of Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. That, like, you guys were born, like, two seconds apart, or, you know, they were twins, so maybe a couple minutes apart or whatever it was. And then, you know, Esau gets all the birthrights? How fair is that? Just because he came out seconds earlier. So he's going to get all the birthrights. He's going to get pretty much everything. And those cultures, maybe you're not thinking about it, but in that culture, in that time, that birthright was a huge thing. That means you got a majority of the inheritance and yeah. pretty much got, you know, you got to run the family once your parents are gone or whatever, and you're going to be in charge of all your younger ones. And it's like... Yeah. Yeah. The, the names were huge back in the day. Mm-hmm. The names were a big deal. And uh, also, that firstborn, man. That firstborn was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. so... You know, it's like, here he is, and one day Esau comes in from a long day of hunting, and he says, feed me, I'm starving, I'm about to die. And Jacob says, give me your birthrights. <laughs> give me your birthrights. And the crazy thing is, Jacob should have never even had the birthrights. Yeah. And Esau said, well, what good is it going to do if I die? Take him. Yeah. See him trying to figure it out. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, you could see, I mean... When I hear the story, when I hear people talk about it, I can almost see like the younger brother, like you know, taking a shot. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah give well, me your birthright. Give it to me, man. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> and then the blessing at the end, like before Isaac dies, he, well, him and his mom pretty much lie to get the blessing upon him too. So it wasn't just the birthright; it's the blessing. He took his blessing and his birthright, which causes conflict. And then he ended up running, which, I mean, if you lie, you manipulate. If you still, yeah. God could still have a plan and a purpose for you. If you look, if you read, like I said at the very beginning, I thought the Bible was a dictionary for Christians. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. But then we started to read it, and I started reading. It, and I was like, "Whoa, what the heck is going on?" Like. He stole his birthright. He stole his blessing. It's like took his favor. I was like, wow! Like, there's a lot of things in the Bible that we don't really understand that have a lot of wisdom. Mm-hmm. And I mean, sometimes we think we're not qualified. We're not good enough. How could God use me? All the things that I've done, I'm broken. All the things I've seen. People used to say, well, if God was real, why would God? Why would God allow somebody to be abused? Why would he let my mom die of cancer? Why would he take my child from me? Which are all valid points. Yeah, they're they're valid questions, and and they're they're understandable how you could come up with them. And, uh, yeah, it's when you look at those bad things, and I just see a fallen world. Mm. I see, uh, I mean, there's... The one thing that, and I'm not trying to justify anything by any means. Yeah. Um, because you can't justify the sin, really. Uh, God gave us free will, and there are some people that make really, really horrific, bad decisions. And we're not saying and by your mom getting cancer, yeah. she made a bad decision. We're talking more about like if a child was abused. Yeah. 
the child didn't make the bad decision. Yeah. The abuser made the bad decision. And and uh, God still loves that child. God even still loves that person that committed that that, mm. that, that act, that heinous and horrific act enough to send Jesus even for that person. And I see a lot of people, uh, they get upset, you know, like, um, and even some church folk, I'm, I'm being, being real. Yeah, that's uh, what we want to do here. There, there's some church folk that, that when people that are on death row for having a, a huge, um, uh, I think they, uh, the people that are, they're on death row for like murder or something, they come to Christ and get, get saved. And some some church folk get upset with that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And well, to hear that, like Jesus even died for the. But that that same grace, mm -hmm. you know, and it's challenging, man, because of the way that we were brought up in this world, the way that we were groomed and and taught to think and and Conformed be like, to you think, know, yeah. what we, sometimes it challenges how much grace God and how much love, like the love of the Father. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit can really reveal Jesus to that murderer on death row mm. in that prison, that he loves him so much that he saved that, that person. Why is it any different? And and um, I heard some rap songs, you know, and, you know, uh, I've known some Christian rappers that, that their brother got murdered. Mm. And it was one of their challenges to, to pray that they received to pray that the, the the people that murdered his brother received Christ. Wow! And I was just like, and that that stretches you, <laughs> your way of thinking, your heart. You know, you're just like, oh, but I want, uh, you know. But the 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 heinous act, the, the whole fallen world thing, the the disease, the sickness, these things are very real. COVID, uh, cancer. These things are very real, but not one of those can stop somebody from receiving Christ. Yeah, you know if, if and that's why you know we we've, we've been talking about this. It's so important uh, that we, because even the topic that we're talking about at the moment, we don't feel like we're qualified. Yeah, to go share our faith, to go share, because this, the work that Jesus did when we believe. That same work that's inside of us, we can share our faith and in, and in, in our belief in in Christ and in His finished work of the cross was to save us yes. to reach so many people in these conditions that have these questions, and and for them to get saved and the Holy Spirit move and work on their life to where like their mind gets and their heart gets mm. changed and all that stuff. You don't have to be. You don't have to be qualified. Yeah. You just you just gotta receive that that call and and go. You know, like it's, it's so easy. these folks like uh, we're talking about Jacob. Mm. He went on the run, and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And he met God. He wrestled. <laughs> yeah. He wrestled. He, he said, I, and and that's one of the things he got his name changed. By God, you see what I'm talking about. He had that encounter with God, and God changed His name and made him. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy thing because <laughs> Jacob stole the birthrights. Jacob stole the blessing, and it should have actually been the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. It should have never been Jacob. <laughs> so right there, it just shows you, you know, even when you're doing the worst of your things, God could still use you in the middle of it. Um, that's the beautiful thing about it. And, you know, we do our, ask the question of why would God allow this, but why would God allow his only son to die? Why would God send down Jesus to die for the abuser, die for the hurt? I understand mm -hmm. coming down and dying for the innocent, right? Mm -hmm. But he came down to die, and he sent his only son to die. And that's the thing that I don't understand a lot of time. And that's the thing that just really gets me is like, there is this hurt, there is this pain, there is this sin. There's also God who sent his only son, which that 
kind of counters everything that you may think in in a sense you know it's like why would god allow this but why would god allow his only son to only come down to die in the most gruesome way too like we were talking about it earlier like you see a picture of jesus on the cross and his private areas are covered and he's wearing like a little like you know shorts or uh, like a little covering or whatever right a cover over his stuff but yeah. in real life it wasn't like uh, that uh, not either not either and then he didn't get i mean he got beat he got beat tortured he had to carry un- his own cross un- it was like he got beat to where nobody could recognize him like marred beyond any other other prophet you know like i'm talking about like the whooping that he took couldn't compare to anybody, mm. you know, and and he still the mocking. Oh man, the everything that went with it, man. Uh, and I still, it, it challenges me in this area of of offense. Mm. Like I get offended sometimes. <laughs> you know, yeah, go figure. Yeah, I get offended, and then I look at what Jesus went through, and, and I was like, man. What I'm what I'm being offended by is nothing compared to what he went through. You know what I'm talking about? Like I'm just like I can't even imagine and and you being a father mm. and and sending your only son. Your son. Your only son. Not only if you had twelve sons or a do, you know, a whole bunch of sons, like, yeah, there's probably one or two that we could choose that we want to send. I don't have that many, so I don't know. I love all my kids, but there's probably some that you'd be like, Yeah, like here's one or two you could take, but to send his only son, which was God in the flesh, to come down and die for you. And then a lot of times we think that we're unworthy, but God sent his only son to die for you. And we even have to call this show Not Church and let you know that we're not pastors because sometimes we feel unworthy enough. We just want to come and tell you that we do love you. God does love you. Um, That there is a place for you. And... We are sorry if something bad did happen to you by a Christian or if something just hap- bad happened to you, period. If you're have a, if you angry at God, that's all right. He's a big God. Yeah, he's a, he's a big God. He could take it. He wants you to come to him if you're mad at him or not. If you want to yell at him, yell at him. If you want to scream at him, scream at him. But the most important thing is just be in a relationship with him. Start testing who God is in, in the waters, waters of your hurt, yeah. of where you're at, where you don't expect you to... Have to like somebody told me one time like, you know like, um, once you get better you could do better. I'm like what? <laughs> once I get better I could do better. Like I could start serving and I could start doing this and that in a church. I'm like, so you want me to do better, to get better? It's like why don't I, you know why not to or whatever. I I don't know exact way that they said it. Something in those terms of like. They wanted me to be better before I could get better. That's what it was. I had to be better to get better. And I'm like, what? Don't I have to do better to start getting better? Because really, at the end of the day, that's what it takes is me to start doing better stuff in my life, stuff that God's calling me to do. Write a book when I think, why would God ask me to write a book? Because you know what? At the end of the day, if that that book is going to mean more to people because... I am dyslexic. I have learning disabilities. I have this. I shouldn't have been the one. But you know what? I'm the one who did it. I'm the one who wrote it. I'm the one who's just obeyed. And I was the one that God was able to use. And it doesn't matter if you're a prostitute, a murderer, if you're in jail, if you're in prison, if you don't think you're good enough, if you don't think you're capable of doing it. Because even Moses, to everybody else, it was, I can't do it. But God still used them. And sometimes that's just an excuse that we're going to use that the enemy tells us. It's like, you're not good enough. Yeah. But you know what? Like, that was when I was younger. Is when a lot of that stuff was. And that a lot of that stuff happened. It isn't who I am now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to identify with who, who God says you are. Um, um. Uh, it's kind of difficult when uh, you got a wrong perception of God. Um, even a father figure, you mm. know, or even like one of these church members that are, is telling you stuff, and it's not really, it's not really the Holy Spirit, you know. It's uh, the your your dad, you know, the way that your dad loved you, you know what I mean. Uh, if he didn't know the Lord, 
um, he loved you the best that he, he knew how, and he probably fell short, you know, even, we even all do. Christians, we all fall short, you know, and we need, we need the Lord, but, so I, and I've heard this, it's like, wait, if you went to your dad to get filled, you're, you're, you're going to a dry cup, especially if he's not saved. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So if your you're, earthly father. If you're looking for some Christian to give you what only God can give you. Mm, you're uh, going to a dry and, cup. And it, I mean, if they just claim to be a Christian, if they're, you know, if they're not in, and that's where you can't let where somebody's not affect where you are. And I say that to say this, if somebody did you wrong, it's not, the, the Jesus in them, even though they bear his name, Christian, yeah. uh, it's not the Jesus in them. If and, and you have to understand that you're dealing with people. You know, we're, we are human. <laughs> people are even, even you and I, um, we are human beings. And we, we, have, we have days, we have uh, moments where uh, we're, we're not. I say the wrong words yeah. most of the time. I don't but, know what to always say that's the right thing to say. But getting out of that, I can't let where that person was mm. in their life affect my view on getting together with some people who believe in Christ. Yeah. I can't let where they're not affect how I can get in touch with, with my creator and the Lord and, Jesus. And that's a good point, too, is we got to make sure that we stay in community. Don't isolate yourself and just, hey, all I need is God. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, if you really want change in the church or need change in the church, you got to realize it's a body of people. So if you want that change, sometimes you have to be that change. Sometimes you have to be the one. Maybe they don't have that perspective. Maybe God created you with that special perspective so you could go in and you could show them. I've heard that. Actually, if you go into a church and you see where an area needs improvement, that could be God calling you and anointing you to be that change. Yes. Uh, to be that, to be that leader. Uh, I know I've even heard this uh, in relationships, period. If you don't feel the love in a relationship, be the love. Yeah. <laughs> in the relationship. If you, if you see a shortcoming and you know you got it. If you don't know a kind person, <laughs> be a kind person. Yeah. And be the then, person. But you said that, I was just like, man, that's so true. You see the need, go meet it. Go fill the need. I mean, we are just a body. Everybody falls short, but think about a body without an arm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're complaining about somebody who doesn't have an arm, but maybe that's what God created you to be is go be the arm for that body. Go be the leg for that body. You know, I hear a lot of people in general, not just Christians, like, oh, I'm the head and not the tail or whatever it is. And you know what? I thought about it one day, and I was like, God, and I was just kind of talking with them. I was like, God, I hear this and that, but I don't want to be the head or the tail. I want to be the heart. I want to be the heart of the body. That's what I want to be. I don't want to be the head or the tail. I don't want to be the foot or the hand. I want to be the heart because mm-hmm. the heart is actually what helps everything. Without the heart, the whole body dies. <laughs> And sometimes I was complaining about the heart of the body, the heart of the church, the heart of the people, the heart of Christians. And really, like, we're all, I think, trying to do the best that we can, especially when it comes to God and trying to understand that. We're all trying to do the best that we can. And I'm going to go complain about somebody falling short. What if I could go change that and show them and help them and give them a hand? And that's why today we're talking about not the church, and we're not pastors, we're just people. Yeah. And half the stuff that we said probably about Scripture today was probably maybe halfway right because we don't know it, like how some of these pastors and people know it. We just know it's not about a religion to us, it's about a relationship. That's right. And yes, we do get in the Word and we do try to be good Christians, but do we fall short? Absolutely. Every day, uh, in one way or another, we're not perfect. And then... If, if we were perfect, then there would be no need for Jesus. But uh, we're still breathing. We're still here on this world. I'm telling you, every single one of us needs the Lord Jesus. And according to the Bible, there was only one perfect person. 
And it wasn't Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Joseph, or any of these people. Like, it was Jesus. Yeah. It was Jesus. And that was the only perfect person. So if you have imperfections, you're still good enough. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like, who you are or where you are. If you're a drug dealer, if you're a crackhead, if you're struggling with drugs, if you're struggling with your mental health, the thing we want to come here today is just to let you know that God loves you, who you are, and where you're at. You know, one thing that I noticed, too, um, and this is from reading the Word, uh, you get into Hebrews um, chapter 11, it talks about uh, the faith. And yeah. It's pretty much like the hall of faith. Yeah. You know, like if, you, if you've been in church for a little bit, uh, you kind of relate the hall of fame and then the hall of faith, right? Yeah. Um, so... If you look at all these people that we've been talking about, Moses having anger issues, hitting the rock, and, and doing it, Abraham lying a couple of times, uh, even his children, uh, Isaac and Jacob, both they both lied and manipulated as yeah. well. You know, like all these great men of God, there's been there's been imperfections, men and women, yeah, men and women of God, um, but they're not known for that. In the Hall of Faith, all it talks about is their faith. It only talks about what they, what the good that they've done, and and that's what's so beautiful about the the blood of Jesus, right? Yes. It's like when we come to faith in Him and and we're cleansed and He takes our sin away, uh, we're no longer that person. Mm, that's you good. know, uh, we still are in this world, but as we continue on with Him, we stand before Him. Blameless and and righteous only because of what Jesus did for, and that's what it's like. You, you, we've done all these things, and sometimes it's up here. Like, yes, it's mental. Know, it's mental, like we still identify. Sometimes we still think, you know, but but what God says about us in the end, yeah, is no, and good and faithful serve. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like only because of Jesus, man. Yeah, amen to that. And I just want you guys to know, if you are listening to this, there's probably something that's been stirred in your heart, not from us, but then from God, that even had you or drawn to this, like, not church. Like, oh, that sounds like something I need, not church. Mm-hmm. And not a pastor. Like, sometimes we just want to share our testimonies, or sometimes God's calling us to do something, and we think we have to go to seminary school, or we think we have to do these great things, but... Maybe God wants to just use you right where you are, how you are. And maybe he wants to use you to make change in the things that you feel that are injustice. If it's injustice from the laws, if it's injustice from the church, if it's injustice from what people are doing to each other. If it's even injustice that you've done to somebody at some point to where you understand that because you've done that. God still loves you. He wants to use you. We're going to wrap it up for today, but... Just want to pray for you guys real quick. If Austin could lead us in a quick prayer, and we just want to pray for just every every listener. Um, we ask that you know God just was spoken through us, and that you guys had the ears to hear and the the hearts to receive it. And uh, Austin, can you lead us in a prayer? Um, sure. Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and uh, right now I pray. Lord, for every single listener, Lord God, uh, I pray that you reveal more of yourself to them uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, and and right where they're at, um, you know their need. Lord, I pray that you meet it. I pray um, that even uh, those who are, are struggling, Lord God, that you walk with them hand in hand, comfort them, um, help them, and um, I pray that that this, this is uh, something that they can meditate on, Lord God, and, and uh, really go deeper with you, Lord God. And I pray that as they go and they make the effort that you meet them and that their roots grow deeper in your love and um, that Jesus becomes more real and uh, they continue on in the faith. And we thank you for your perfect love, Lord God. We thank you for sending Jesus and and. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the finished work of the cross, and we thank you for for asking the Father to give us Holy Spirit so that we can do uh, this walk with you. And uh, We love you, and we thank you, and uh, blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.